But first, let's return to Penny Wong's push for Labor to consider recognising Palestinian statehood. She made the comments at a scripted speech last night at the ANU and then she reiterated the message this morning, supported later in the day by the Prime Minister. But here's an analysis on what this means at, at every level, internationally, domestically and amongst our allies. I'm joined now by the foreign editor at The Australian, Greg Sheridan. Well, Greg, give us your top-line view. I mean, I thought this was an extraordinary move by Penny Wong. There are decades of bipartisanship on this position about a two-state solution. Give us your sense of, of what you heard from the Foreign Minister last night and then, I guess, being backed in today by the Prime Minister. Well, Peter, I was profoundly disappointed in this speech. I've had a lot of respect and admiration for Penny Wong previously. But this speech, although it was carefully worded, there's a kind of undergraduate silliness to the speech. It's as if she's the first person who's ever discovered a two-state solution and she has a Pollyanna uh, talk about it as though you could just impose it tomorrow and the only thing stopping it is the wicked unreasonableness of those Israelis. Uh, and it's also a deeply, deeply cynical speech. This is designed... If, Albani if Albanese had won the voice, he would have been the superhero of the left forevermore, the greatest constitutional reformer in the history of the Labor Party. If he recognises Palestine, mm. he will go to the election with an unassailable position amongst Muslim activists who care uh, about Palestine and not anything else, and he will fortify himself against the Greens, whereas the, the most likely outcome at the next election is that the Liberals swipe a couple of seats from him, but the Greens swipe a few seats from him and he goes into minority government. Now, that can be the only explanation. This motion on the Labor Party books to recognise Palestine has been on the books for years. And it's one of those motions which the government knows is utterly ridiculous. And therefore, rather than fight the left over it, they just include a weasel word of, about, you know, when the timing is appropriate or something. Now, what Penny Wong has done is she has validated Hamas's tactics. Hamas goes and kills 1,200 Jews, commits the worst terrorism that we've seen in modern times, and the result is the Australian Foreign Minister is calling for immediate diplomatic recognition of a Palestinian state. Well done, the terrorists. Very bad effort by the Australian Foreign Minister. Although, having said all that, um, Australia acting alone won't make a bit of difference, except that it demoralises, mm. it marginally demoralises our friends in Israel. And of course, it profoundly distresses the Jewish community and all friends of Israel in Australia. But the government couldn't seem to care less about that. It's interesting. I've written about this for The Australian tomorrow, and I, I refer to the speech as having a, a Pollyanna ideal from the foreign minister. So we're on the same page there. But I mean, this is absolutely brutally, not just about the Muslim vote in Western Sydney, this is about the Greens. This is exactly what this is designed to do, to, to cleave off some of that vote that they're using, particularly with young, young people, to the Greens. Rather than contest the false premise uh, put up about Israel and many other things by the Greens, Labor doesn't want to touch that. They don't trust themselves or believe themselves enough to defend old Labor values. They're now just joining the Greens or trying to beat the Greens at their own game. And, and this is why it's just rank politics and it stinks. Well, I agree with you, Peter. I think this is... Uh, the government has gone bad on security, started off very good on security, and, you know, my column pays on results. I don't care what political party anybody else is, anybody's in. They start off very good on security and they've gone worse and worse and worse as the months have gone on. Now, it is true, the majority of nations do recognise a Palestinian state, but that's because at the United Nations you've got an Afro-Arab majority, which is profoundly inimical to democracy and adopts all kinds of positions in the General Assembly, which are, you know, which are, are, are repugnant to democratic values. Mm. Now, for a state actually to come into being... So, of course, Palestine doesn't satisfy all the criteria you need to be recognised as a state control of territory, undisputed territory, clear, coherent national government, all that. So that's all rubbish. Everything which DFAT has previously said is needed. So Penny Wong's just thrown that in the trash can. All the Palestinian vetoes which make it impossible, such as the right of return for millions and millions and millions of Palestinian descendants to go and live in Israel proper, which the Palestinians regard as a, you know, a precondition for them even coming to the talks. Uh, no mention of that. No, that's all just 
forget about that, all blame goes to Israel. But the uh, for a state actually to come into existence, the Security Council has to uh, vote on it. And the governing resolutions of the Security Council, which any decent Australian government should seek to uphold, regard these territories as disputed territories. The last clear sovereignty of the West Bank and Gaza was exercised by the Ottoman Empire. They're disputed territories. And of course, everyone wants a two-state solution eventually. But there is simply no way that the Palestinian polity can uh, govern a state which would guarantee internal self-government and refrain from deadly terrorist attacks on Israel from day one. Now, Israel, you know, the first two-state solution was the United Nations partition of the territory in 1947. The Palestinians rejected that and all the neighbouring Arab armies invaded Israel. And at least three times since then, Israel has offered a Palestinian state with virtually all of the West Bank and Gaza, tiny bit kept for Israel, but compensating land from Israel proper, and the Palestinians have never come to the party. Don't believe me on it? Read Bill Clinton's memoirs or the memoirs of all of those, you know, extreme right-wingers who served in the Bill Clinton administration. Now, Penny Wong, I suspect, knows all this because she's a smart person, but she simply delivered a jejeune undergraduate nonsense lecture as though she just discovered a two-state solution. But it had a... I'm just back from New Zealand. It had a Jacinda Ardern quality about it. It was just woke gesturing to a left-wing sectarian audience. That's what's so disappointing about it. i got to leave you there, Greg. I didn't interrupt, though, because you're the best in the business, and that was absolutely nailing what has been, I think, a really dark day for Australian foreign policy today. Thank you, as always.